G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So last week, I posted a video of the second part of the series of my full fish room tour. So obviously this week is gonna be part three. If you haven't seen part one or part two, you can watch those videos right here. However, let's get straight into it with part three of my full fish room tour. So this is the view I have of my fish room when I first walk into it. And this week we're gonna be discussing what is in the top row of tanks. However, not every tank on the top row has fish in it. Basically, when you run a fish room, you intend to breed fish, and you need somewhere to house their fry, to house their babies so they can grow out. And that's basically what I use the top row of tanks for, as fry grow out tanks, to grow up the babies. Now, you can see these tanks are placed uh, on their short ends at the front, so I can look down at the tank. And basically, I've done that so I can fit more tanks on each row of stands. So if I put these tanks on their, their proper front end, at the front, I would only fit two tanks per four foot of stand. However, because I've put them on their short end, I can fit four tanks per four, per four foot of stand. So these tanks are two foot long, one foot wide, and 36 centimeters high. And they're purely placed like this so I can put more tanks in the fish room. I, it's not too bad looking down the length of the tank. Uh, I, I don't mind that because, as I said, these are purely for fry grow out tanks. I was using them as quarantine tanks as well, and that's why this tank is so, the water level is so low. But I learned a valuable lesson a couple of weeks back where I was quarantining some guppies and they were sick. And luckily I hadn't quarantined, but I learned a valuable lesson where you shouldn't use the top row of tanks for quarantine because if you splash water from that top tank, you can splash it onto the tanks below and infect your fish tanks below it or the entire system if you run the system like I do where all these tanks run off one central sump which is down there in the corner. So I don't use these tanks as quarantine tanks anymore. Uh, they're purely for fry grow out or to basically breed very small fish or very very small cichlids but I haven't done that yet with the, fry, with the top row of tanks. Purely been using them as fry grow out. But anyway guys, let's have a look at what fish I do have in the top rack. Okay, so the first tank on the rack is a fry grow out tank for Lamprolotus ocellatus gold. There is exactly 38 fry in here and they are about two months old. So you can see them there swimming around um, and they don't have any shells with them. Obviously Lamprolotus ocellatus are shell dwelling cichlids but when you're growing out fry, it's best not to keep shells with them. That's purely because they're very hard to catch. The moment you put a net in there, they're gonna dart into their shells and you're not gonna be able to get them out. So instead, I suggest you use PVC pipe that, I've, that you cut up into pretty long sections so they feel um, that they have a little bit of a hidey hole. And that's just 10 mil PVC pipe cut into about oh, five, six centimeters long sections uh, so they can hide. They don't mind hiding behind the sponge filter as well, that gives them a bit of shelter. But yeah, pretty simple setup. Uh, feed these guys two to three times a day. Uh, a combination of pellets that are soaked in tank water for at least 20 minutes to soften them up uh, so the fry can eat the pellets. Um, I feed them mysa shrimp, I feed them brine shrimp, baby brine shrimp, and I also feed them live microworms. So yeah, these guys are growing up now and they should be ready for sale in about another six months. They aren't exactly fast growers, but they're doing really well. Okay, so the next tank, guess what? More Lamprolotus ocellatus gold fry. So they're next to each other, these two tanks uh, on the rack, and they're directly below the parents' tank. So I try to do that, obviously it's easier to just catch the fry from the parents' tank get up on the foot ladder and pop them in the tanks above for grow out rather than going from one end of the room to another you just go from here to here obviously so this tank has younger fry in it these fry are about maybe a month old uh, I can't remember I am terrible at recording um, logs and it's just it's getting pretty difficult to record when fry are being born because the Ockies keep having babies and I've got two females in here um, if you haven't seen part one, obviously you can watch that video after this. 
but they keep breeding uh, at alternating rates and it's very difficult to tell which fries from who and when they were born. So I've got approximate dates, but yeah, these guys are about, yeah, I think a month, month and a half old. So I could put them in here with these fry because they're pretty much still, like obviously these fry are smaller than these fry. However, there's already almost 40 fry in this tank, so I don't want to overcrowd it. And if anything, that's probably a little bit too much. Um, you don't want to overcrowd your tanks where you're growing out fry because you can potentially stunt your fish. Uh, they'll stop growing at a certain, at a, to, at a, to a certain size. So it's best to keep, give them as much room as possible. But anyway, so yeah, the first two tanks, uh, Lamprologus gold oscillatus, uh, Lamprologus oscillatus gold fry. And yeah, they've got fry in here that uh, I need to move out because they're starting to get a bit too big and the parents are picking on them because they want to breed again. So they'll get moved into here because I think there's about maybe not even 20 fry in this tank. So these guys will get some more siblings shortly. Okay, on to the next tank. So I wasn't gonna show this tank purely because I'm pretty embarrassed by it. Uh, this was the tank that housed the 10 guppies that almost infected my entire system with fin rot. And that one guppy that you see there is the sole survivor. And she is a baby of one of the last remaining females that um, had her in this tank. And she's totally fine. So I need to get her out of here, disinfect the tank and hook it back into the system. But yeah, pretty boring tank. Um, but I just need to get off my butt and uh, clean it up and get it back, back up and running. She's not going to be introduced into this system, she'll go into a completely separate tank. But um, yeah, that's that tank, just some, that was, that's the way I learned my lesson with the quarantine tank. So guys, this tank I'm pretty proud of because these are my Neolamprologus brevis fry. So I've got about, oh, I think about 15 in here now. You can see some of them are quite large. And I started pulling fry from the parents' tank the other day, but those fry are pretty small and the larger, older fry were picking on them. So I stopped doing that and I've kept the fry in with the parents a little longer than I'd like, but they seem to be doing okay. So like the Lamprologus oscillatus, um, with the parents being just below the fry tank, the brevis, main brevis parents tank, you can see the male sitting on the shell there, um, right here. Uh, there, the fry tank is directly above the parents tank, uh, purely for ease of moving fry from the bottom tank, from the parents tank, into the fry grow out tank. And you can see this tank has, does have some um, rocks in it, and, as well as the PVC pipe for the fry to hide in. But for some reason, the brevis, they've been swimming in the mid water. Um, and not really sitting at the bottom of the tank. So they're pretty active swimmers, which is nice to see. Uh, but I also put the bits of rock in there before the smaller fry that I did introduce into this tank the other day. Uh, so they did have some hidey holes to get away from the larger fry. But they've been fine, none of them have been preyed on. So yeah, these guys are about, or oh, I'd say they're about a month and a half old and they are growing a lot faster than the Lamprologus oscillatus babies. So really pleased with that. And like I said, I think I've got about 15 in here and I've probably got about another 15 to 20 in the parents tank, but they're far too small to move out of the parents tank just yet. Uh, they'll need to go in to another grow out tank because these fry are getting quite large and I don't want to mix them with the larger fry because they're getting to a size where they will, they could kill the smaller babies. But yeah, so that's my Neolamprologus brevis tank, or fry grow out tank. <laughs> so guys, this is the Neolamprologus brevis tank, uh, the fry grow out tank, and then the next two tanks don't have anything in them. Basically, these are just some empty shells. There's no fish in these two tanks. Um, I was using this tank to catch the last remaining Oki fry out of their shells to move them into their final grow out tanks. Uh, so that's why these shells are in here, they can come out. Um, however, the next row of tanks, next to the, the next tank next to them has endler guppies in it. And you can see there's heaps in here. They're going really well. 
and I have some wool mats in here to protect the fry from being eaten. Now to be honest, these woolen mats haven't really helped that much. They've kind of, they, they kind of had, have slowed the rate at which fish get eaten in this tank. Uh, however, they st fish still do get eaten in here. I uh, did just see a f one baby guppy uh, swimming in amongst the, the wool, um, but yeah, I, they, they're not breeding as readily as they were when I had them in one of the four foot tanks below because all the fry had enough room to swim away from the adults, but in this tank they don't. So um, these endler guppies are gonna go into one of the tanks behind me on the new rack, and I'll be able to plant that with uh, some java moss, and hopefully there won't be any snails because I don't want any snails, and, but in that java moss, that will provide more shelter for the fry to hide in than this, these woolen mats can do. But yeah, so these are my guppy tank, just endler guppies. I love guppies, they're easy to breed, they're nice colourful fish and they're easy to sell. So I'll get back into the big fantail guppies eventually but for now I'm just going to keep these endler guppies. And yeah, this is just being lit up by one of my um, LED torches. I don't have a light on this row because I've been using it on the new rack for the fish that you'll see in a, cut in a few more weeks. Um, but that rack's getting its own lighting shortly. So this is just a temporary light, it's just a LED torch that I use. Anyway, yeah, the next tank is empty, as are the next two, but the last two tanks on this rack do have fish in them, so let's have a look at what they are. So guys, the last two tanks on the row, on the top row, house one Neolamprologus tetrathopalus each. Um, I purchased these fish about two to three months ago when they were quite small, with the intention of putting them into a larger tank with more trets. That's what these guys are commonly known as, trets, um, and it's much easier to say. However, uh, when I purchased these fish, they were far too small to put into the main tank. They would have been killed within a few days, so I had to separate them and keep them in a smaller tank for them to grow out. Now, they're pretty much a good size to be introduced into that main tank now, so I'm going to do that. Sh I might be doing that shortly, but I am hesitant to do it because... Uh, I might have a bonded pair in the main tank now and I don't want to disrupt that harmony. These fish are quite aggressive fish and um, introducing more, especially when I have a bonded pair who are, that are larger than these two, might harm these two fish. So these guys I might sell um, in an upcoming auction, which is unfortunate because I love these fish. Uh, they're quite striking fish from Lake Tanganyika. Nice blue white body with black bars, uh, similar in appearance to Fontosa. Uh, they've actually, some people call them poor man's Fontosa, but for some reason, sometimes, depending on the uh, popularity of Fontosas versus these guys, these guys can be more expensive than Fr uh, Fontosa. So there you go. But yeah, these guys are doing quite well in these tanks. The tanks are small for Tretts, these, these tanks, but these guys were tiny when I first purchased them. Um, and I purchased them basically because I thought I had uh, females, all females in the main tank. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more about those, the, the, the other four that I have in next week's video. But I purchased these in the hope that I'll, I'd get a male out of them because I really thought that the other four that I had were all females. But yeah, I might have a bonded pair now in the main tank after all that. And I've had that other, that other four for about six months now. So, I'll explain more about those guys in next week's video, but yeah, this is the last two tanks on the top row of tanks in my fish room. So there you have it guys, part three of my full fish room tour. I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please hit the like, comment and subscribe buttons, I'd really appreciate it. So next week we're going to be discussing what is in the bottom row of tanks in part four of my full fish room tour. So look out for that video early next week. Alright guys, I'll wrap this one up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in part 4 next week. See yous.